Well, today we're going to make a little leaf. I have it in my hand here, but you can't really see it, so we'll do a quick close-up. I thought this would be a nice, quick little project. Another good gift idea if you're looking for gifts to give people, and we'll talk about what you can do with a leaf and why it's a good gift idea when we're all done. So let's take a look at the leaf, and then we'll go to the forge. This is our little leaf that we're going to make today. It's really quite small and delicate. It's made out of a piece of 3 8 square bar. The whole thing is only about two and a half inches long. The leaf itself is about an inch and a quarter. And it looks like it's about three quarters wide. Those dimensions really mean very little. Make the leaf the way you want it. You can make it bigger, smaller, thicker, thinner. But I think this is a very good size for quite a few uses and it's a good start in making leaves. A leaf like this really needs very few specialized tools. It can be done mostly at the the anvil with a hammer. You'll need tongs at some point. I'm using a short piece of bar because I had some of this just laying around instead of taking a long piece. But if you leave it long enough to work and hold the bar in your hand, you can do most of this before you cut it off. You'll have to cut it off eventually, turn it around and work the stem end. And then you're going to need a small chisel. We covered making hot chisels. This is a, a smaller version. This one's about four inches long, has a nicely curved edge. And I'll, I'll show this closer when we get to it. This one I'll use under the treadle hammer. If you're going to use it by hand at the anvil, make it a little longer so you can keep your hands away from the heat. We're going to start by just drawing a very short taper right at the edge of the anvil. We really don't want this taper to be any more than about a half inch long. A little shorter would be okay. The next thing we're going to do is shoulder this just behind the taper. It's almost no flat, maybe an eighth inch of straight 3 8 bar left there. And this is where the stem will be. Be careful to get a clean shoulder. You want to take this down to probably about 3 16 square. This is also real easy to create a stress riser here if you're not careful. So don't work it too cold. You're going to have to go back to the fire quite regularly. You don't need to draw the full stem out at this point. You can take it out a little further if you want to, but I'd rather cut it off and turn it around to do that later. But I am going to start to round that up a little bit right up next to the leaf. So what we have then is this little short square point on what is starting to become our stem. And that's most of the, the leaf shape taken care of, except it's a square instead of a flat. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to flatten it. And when we flatten this, we're going to stand it up on the diamond. So one at corner is standing up and two corners are horizontal. And those two horizontal corners give us nice crisp edges when we spread this out. Try and spread this out evenly so you get a symmetrical leaf. If you need to, you can go file that. I'm going to take another heat and spread that just a little bit more. But you're going for symmetrical here. This leaf looks a lot better if it's even. And a fairly thin edge, not thin enough to be sharp but thin and delicate. And that's most of our leaf shape done. Now at this point you can do the veining hot at the anvil if you want to. And really you can do it pretty much at this heat. But we can do this just like this if we want to. Although it's can be hard to hold on to. 
and this little chisel is round in this direction so that it walks very easily and doesn't leave chop marks. So you walk it along this way as you get, run your veins. I think I'd rather do this under the treadle hammer since we just showed that treadle hammer video the other day this is one of the jobs I think really pays off under the treadle hammer. So I'm going to let this cool until I can hold on to it with my bare hand. At that point I'm going to do just a little bit of filing to clean up the edge of the leaf and make sure it's nice and clean and then I'm going to go ahead and chisel it. Really this needs very little filing. There's just a few little odd divots in there. And I'll also file a little bevel on the edge so it's a little crisper and better looking edge there. Better job you do at the end, but the less filing you're going to have to do. That's really all I'm going to do to that, though. I think that looks just a little bit cleaner. It's a very subtle difference. You may not be able to see it on the camera. I'm just going to use this little chisel under the treadle hammer. And you don't have to hit very hard. This hammer will cut all the way through this pretty easily. In fact, it's very easy to split the tip on a leaf like this. But this allows me to hold it very well, and I've got my stop in place so I can't squish my hand. Very light, close to the tip, and maybe don't even run clear to the tip just to avoid splitting that. And then we'll put a little cross veins in. Because of the curved edge of the chisel, I have to rock it up a little bit to get it into the central vein neatly. And I'm not too worried about going all the way out to the edge. You can if you'd like. but I don't think it's really necessary. One blacksmith once described doing natural forms, whether they're animal forms or plant forms, as doing caricatures. You're not trying to make a specific lifelike leaf, you're trying to make something that people recognize as a leaf. So it doesn't have to be exactly the same as one out of nature unless that's what you're trying to do. There's our chiseled leaf, and there's our little chisel. This one's made from S7. So we're going to get that hot and do a little bit more shaping to it. This is still kind of flat and lifeless, even though it is clearly a leaf at this point. We can make it look better. This is a wooden block that I use under the drill press that just happened to have a nice hole in it. You can use the end of a stump or something else with a nice depression, but you don't want to mess up your veining in an iron tool. So work this around so you don't create kinks. What I'm doing is I'm giving it a nice domed shape. But I don't want the leaf to just be a little bowl. Now I want to bring that tip forward. And Again, this is all just artistic. This is whatever you want your leaf to look like. But doing a little bit to give it some three-dimensional shape I think really makes a difference in the long run. So I'm going to cut this off probably at about an oh, inch and a half. I'm not going to bother to measure it, just whatever looks about right. Now for some things, you may not want to cut this off. You may need to leave the leaf on the end of the bar. There are lots of things you can do with a leaf besides just a standalone leaf. So think about that. This could be part of a poker element or part of a, a fancy fork or spoon handle. All sorts of things you could do with it. So if you don't need to cut it off the bar, leave it on the bar. But for this, we're going to cut it off. 
and then we're going to draw that stem out. Be careful not to squeeze your leaf too hard as you draw this out. You'll flatten it out again. We just want to draw the stem out so it's a nice round stem that looks appropriate. Probably about 3 sixteenths or maybe a little bit under. Remember we draw out square and then we'll turn it to octagon. So I'm about to 3 16th square. Now I'll go to the octagon. And then we'll start rounding this up. I think we can use one more heat to get that nice and clean and round. You want this to have a certain organic look to it, so you want to take all the, the ridge lines from being square or octagon out. This isn't chamfering, it's definitely rounding, although the occasional flat spot isn't going to hurt anything. So it's probably about three to four inches long. Now we want to just give that a graceful bend. And exactly what you do here is purely up to what you feel like doing. And I want to bend that tail off just a little bit. When I get it wrapped around I want to bring it to the front. set it down across the front just very lightly there and that's just to kind of seal it up so it doesn't fall off or whatever you put it on so that is pretty much our forged leaf I'm going to do just a couple of more things to it to make it look better but the forging part is done First thing I'm going to do is just lightly wire brush it, make sure there's no scale, especially that red oxide you get from the gas forge, which can be quite distracting. And you can certainly leave it right here like this, put a little wax on it and it'd be done. But this is an old trick. This is a bronze brush or a brass brush, and if you do this at a black heat, and I hope you can see that in the camera, it imparts a little bronze patina to the, the leaf. And I think that looks pretty nice on a little leaf like this. And then as it cools, we're going to wax it like I usually do. Just hot enough to smoke a little bit. That's all there is to getting it waxed. And just a last step, wipe any excess wax off of the rag. And then let it cool so you can actually hold on to it and admire it. It's still a little bit hot at the moment. And hopefully it'll stand on the anvil so you can see it.
So what do we do with a little leaf? Well, you can give it as a gift to wear around the neck with a, a chain or a, a nice decorative cord. Something besides an old piece of clothesline rope probably would be nice. You can use it as a key fob. Put this on your on your key ring and use it as a nice little key, key ring keeper there or decorative thing on your key ring. It would make a nice little fob for a pole on your ceiling fan or your, your light that has a pull cord on it. Probably a lot more things. Uh, it's a good, good Christmas gift as a key ring. But the, I'd, I'd include the little split ring that your keys go on if you're going to give it for that purpose. Again, a neck, necklace. And it would look good just hanging on the tree as a simple little Christmas tree ornament. And I think you can think of some other things. A uh, little leaf like this left on the bar, or a bigger leaf, you can use the same technique and make bigger leaves, longer leaves, wider leaves, lots of different options. Left on the bar, there's a lot of things we can do with it, and we will explore some of those options in the near future. We will also look at making raised veins in a leaf, but that will take a special dye, and we'll make the dye and then try a leaf with some raised veins to see what it looks like. So, stay tuned. We'll get to that one of these days. In the meantime, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Get out to the shop. Make something, whether it's a leaf, whether it's something else. Just go out and practice your skills. Stay safe. Wear your safety glasses. And I'll be here waiting for you.